We have new details tonight about warnings of a shoe bomb terror threat and fears that an Al Qaeda affiliate may be behind it. We'll join me now to talk about that. It's Senator John McCain. Senator, welcome back to the show to you. Let's talk about this uh, terror threat and the apparent possible link to Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. What do you know about this and how serious do you think it is? I, th I think it's uh, any threat, of course, is serious and. Uh, this is exacerbated by the fact that we are seeing the spread of al-Qaeda or al-Qaeda, quote, affiliated organizations. They have one thing in common. They want to attack and destroy the United States of America. So these attacks, I, these threats, we must treat as credible threats. Whether they're actually credible or not is something that we're not exactly sure of. Uh, but I have no doubt that with the spread of al-Qaeda throughout the Middle East and North Africa, uh, and other places in Africa that these threats will not diminish. I want to turn to this uh, tragedy that's unfurling in the Ukraine. I want to play a clip first of all of what President Obama said about this. Listen to this and then I'll ask your reaction. Our approach as the United States is not to see these as some Cold War chessboard in which um, uh, we're, we're in competition with Russia. Our goal is to make sure that the people of Ukraine are able to make decisions for themselves about their future. Now, over 100 people have now died. Terrible scenes there that we're seeing all day long on our television screens. What is the solution here, Senator, do you think, to what is clearly a massive problem that's finally erupted in, in the way that we've seen? Serious sanctions, but just let me say that the president just displayed his incredible naivete about Vladimir. Remember, after I'm reelected, we'll be tell Vladimir. After I'm reelected, will be he'll be more uh, flexible. Uh, he doesn't. Th president doesn't think it's a chess game. Certainly, Vladimir Putin does. Vladimir Putin wants a restoration of the Russian Empire, of which uh, the Ukraine is the crown jewel. And I'm very worried about what actions after the Olympics that Putin may take in order to ensure that. Remember, Russia is still occupying two parts of the territory of, of Georgia. And for us to not understand that Putin will do what he thinks almost, as, unless he's restrained and constrained, he will do what's necessary to keep Ukraine, the crown jewel of the Russian empire, uh, in the Russian orbit, despite the fact that overwhelming majority of Ukrainians want to be part of Europe. And that's what this is all about. And I, again, this violence is escalating to a dramatic degree. And what worries me is Russian intervention and possible losing parts of Ukraine, especially uh, Crimea, as well as eastern parts of Ukraine. We've got footage of you when you uh, went to the Ukraine. What kind of country is it and what are the people like there? Beautiful country, beautiful people, very sophisticated. They listen to European music. They listen to Europe, they, their, their, their culture, their food. Everything about them aligns, particularly the young people, with Europe. And they will not be satisfied, one, to be part of the Russian Empire, but two, the corruption is horrendous. The son of Yanukovych, the president, is a dentist and he's a billionaire. And there's oligarchs that run basically the economy of, this, of that country and they've run it into the ground. They're in dire economic uh, situations and the European EU has not done a good job. They've kind of uh, not. They've been very, uh, not very well handled this situation. But they're going to need uh, help from the IMF, help from the EU, and certainly support from the United States of America uh, uh, before uh, the Ukrainian people can enjoy a better life. And sanctions are a threat that must be employed. Turning to Syria, we've obviously got you know, Kiev in flames, Venezuela in flames, lots of situations erupting around the world, but Syria remains a hugely difficult problem. Any improvement there, or is the situation worsening? It's worsening. Our director of national intelligence testified that uh, Bashar Assad has gotten stronger while we've gone through this charade of the Geneva meeting. It was so outrageous and such a farce to think that they could go to Geneva and convince uh, Bashar Assad to leave government, to transition from being the head of, of Syria when he's winning, when he's winning on the battlefield. And that was 
a terrible joke. Meanwhile, uh, Pierce, in all due respect, these barrel bombs, these explosive-filled, fuel-filled, uh, shrapnel-filled bombs are being dropped, uh, slaughtering innocent people by, by Bashar Assad, while Bashar Assad slow walks the removal of the chemical weapons. He has played us for fools. And the, meanwhile, the Russians, our buddy Vladimir and, and Sergei, as we call them, are flying in plane loads of Russian weapons, which are killing people. And by the way, if you haven't seen on my website and on Twitter, the pictures that came out of Syria that are documented to be accurate, the horrific pictures of these people who were slaughtered by Bashar Assad, and this president does not do anything of any effect and it's shameful i want to move to what has been a big contentious story this week which is ted nugent who normally wouldn't i guess be that relevant politically but has made himself relevant by attaching himself uh, to a political situation um <clears throat> when he called the president obama and you've had your issues with the president yourself when he called him a subhuman mongrel what, what was your reaction to that it just uh it's it's a free country, but that kind of language really doesn't have any place in our political dialogue. It harms the Republican Party. I'm sure that it harmed that candidate there, and uh, it should be obviously re repudiated from time to time, as you know, particularly in these days of Twitter and Facebook and the, an the cloak of anonymity of uh, Twitter. We see things that are really totally objectionable and, and, and makes you sad actually to see. So that kind of thing is beyond the pale and I hope that our candidate down there learned a lesson. Well, he's Greg Abbott, he's the Texas gubernatorial nominee. Should he now distance himself completely from Ted Nugent because of his comment? Well, if I, if I were him because of those comments, <coughs> I would, but um, because I don't think the people of Texas um, Look, uh, I, I am a severe critic of President Obama, particularly on national security. But that kind of language, he's the president of the United States, he's been elected and re-elected, and I believe we should re treat him respectfully. Two uh, final points, Senator, about the 2016 presidential race. Michelle Bachman, in a new interview, says she thinks many Americans aren't ready for a female president. She actually said directly, I think there was a cachet about having an African-American president because of guilt people don't hold that guilt for a woman. What do you make of those comments? It's a free country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I would bet, my friend, as much as I hate to admit it, that right now, this is why we have campaigns, but right now, if the election were tomorrow, Hillary Clinton would most likely be the president of the United States. I thought well, she wouldn't be my candidate, but uh, I, when you look at the growth of women in the Senate, uh, they're now, I believe now 20 up from uh, just a handful a few years ago. When you look at them in the House of Representatives, when you look at them in the mayors and governors, we're proud that we've had women governors here in Arizona, uh, two in a row. And we have a long history of women governors. So um, I, I, just, I, I just have a very different reading of the American political scene. When it comes to the potential male Republican candidates, Two names are always in the frame, Chris Christie, Ted Cruz. I want to play you a clip of Ted Cruz talking to CNN's Dana Bash earlier today. What I try to keep, keep an eye on is that I don't work for the party bosses in Washington. I work for 26 million Texans. But as Texans. a human being, you are a human being. Look, Does as, it stink? As a human being, I can't control what they say, how they behave. I can control what I do. You've got Ted Cruz continuing to be this kind of outsider you know, ex-Washington renegade, doesn't want to be part of that system. Can that be effective, do you think? Could he win a nomination by playing that card? You know, I, I, I don't know. I have a cordial relationship with uh, Ted Cruz. Um, I disagreed with him vehemently on the shutdown of the government when we shut down the government. Uh, what he did on the debt limit increase. He was exercising his rights as a senator, which he had the right to do to, to demand 60 votes. Um, uh, I, I, I'll let the Republican Party judge, but he has become an effective force in the Republican political scene. I respect that. As I say, I disagree with him, but I want to have this debate within my party, but I hope it would be respectful. Is Chris Christie still a 
potential serious candidate, despite everything that's happened? I believe so, and I think he deserves the uh, innocence until proven guilty. I went through a very serious scandal back earlier in my career, which I wouldn't like to revisit with you. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, I, so I think that, uh, that he certainly has plenty of time to recover from this. I believe he's been a, uh, a very good governor by, of, of a Democrat state, showed by his overwhelming reelection. So I'm hoping he'll continue uh, to improve and, and regain his, uh, his status. He's going through a rough patch. We all know that. I happen to think that he's done a good job as governor. But you never know in one of these things when another shoe is going to drop. Senator McCain, it's always good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you, Piers.